Hey there, nerds. I'm Pruitt. This is Jim Davis. And our class role-playing series rages on with the Barbarian. So make sure to glisten up those pecs and de-louse your loincloth and get ready for some lamentations. It's time to Michael Down, your Jan Vincent. <laughs> on WebDM. Since we're talking Barbarians, there's only one place that we have to start this. Right. I mean, I, yeah, it's kind of hard to get past the mighty feud, panther-like reflexes of Conan, the librarian, the barbarian. Yes, Conan the librarian. <laughs> he talk in his library. <laughs> Conan is a good place to start for barbarians because Conan, for a, a lot of people, perhaps less so now, it's the, sort of their touchstone for a barbarian. And I mean, that, it's in the name. Right, and, and that is kind of like the armorless, maybe there's a, a fur loincloth mm -hmm. uh, or some fur boots, a big sword, dim-witted, you know, cares only about battle, brutish. That's a caricature of the of the character, right? Amazing pecs. Amazing pecs, glistening in the sun. In, in the sun. Uh, but it's a shorthand, and it doesn't do the character justice. No. Right, like that. the, the Conan character, if you read the stories, is cunning and, and has sort of a, a sense of intelligence and thoughtfulness to him, as well as a primal savagery, and particularly if he's about to go into battle and knows he's going into battle, dons armor and, and right, right. You know, fights Seems with Seems like rider. a sensible thing to do. Sensible thing to do. The stories themselves are much richer and paint a fuller picture, that said, I do think that the Barbarian class, if you're looking for like a Conan-esque type character, the Barbarian class offers you a, a wide range of, uh, of options and tools you need to sort of make that character, particularly if you go like criminal background with Barbarian. Because that's the other thing, is Conan is, is awfully kind of roguish, he's very sneaky. Sort of roguish, there's gonna be people who argue he's more like a battle master because yeah. of the way he fights, but I, you know, to me, I, the mechanical stuff that, of, that Barbarian offers uh, really fits that, but I, I like reading the Conan stories because it gives you those ideas for a more primal, sort of savage warrior mm -hmm. that isn't an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> or isn't just a, a clod. <laughs> right, well, I mean, that's the one thing uh, with Conan is he didn't really have a dump stat. Someone rolled those stats. <laughs> yeah, they rolled 5d6, <laughs> dropped the top bottom two. Right, yeah. Eight, nine times, dropped the bottom dropped two. Dropped the bottom, you know. or that one weird one where you generate 36 sets of stats and then pick the best. Then pick the best <laughs> ones from 36 rolls. Like, I'll like do that. that every day of the week and twice sure. on Sunday. But with Barbarians, generally, their more mental stat. Right, so we can assume that Barbarian, and maybe we shouldn't, but it's safe to assume that most Barbarians will have... A dump stat. Well, they're gonna have a dump stat, and their physical stats are gonna be priority, right? They're, of course. They're getting extra from, from Constitution with mm -hmm. their own armor defense. Strength is obviously their primary, and, and you don't want a, a, a bad dex, but like looking at those dump stats that you're gonna, that and particularly if you're playing point by, you're gonna have a dump stat. And even if you roll, you probably have one that's rather low. Mm -hmm. And think about role playing those stats. Yeah, right? like, like what happens when you put your eight in intelligence. Right, something like that. And I, the reason why we're singling it out for Barbarian is because I think the archetype of Barbarian comes with this kind of, well, they're gonna be stupid. Yeah. Or they're going to be dim-witted, or they're going to be sort of a social idiot. Yeah, it's both interesting to look at the stat you're choosing to lower and say, like, okay, how can I role-play this out without it being cliched or a big problem for the rest of the party? But also flipping that around and going like. What does it mean to play an intelligent barbarian? What yeah. does it mean to play a charismatic barbarian or one that's particularly wise? The way you choose your stats, I guess this, I mean, obviously this applies to any character, but to me a barbarian is sort of like a monk in that they're defined by their ability scores because they're such a physical character, yeah. right? Like what they can do, their physicality uh, is so important that those stats to me stand loom larger than say, like a fighter who might have nearly identical stats. Yes, yes, having a Smart barbarian. Right. A smart barbarian. Smart barbarian. <laughs> what does that look like? Like, like, how do you how do you play that uh, alongside that primal rage and physicality? So there's a lot of ways that you could play it. You could play it as a you know a barbarian who might lack a formal education, but is just naturally bright, naturally clever. Mm -hmm. uh, someone who is thoughtful in their approach to their combat and their fighting. Maybe they have a tactical mind mm -hmm. or they have a, uh, a, a sense for sort of uh, strategy and ambush and, and all the different things involved in say fighting in the wild. Hunting is, is one of those things that you would maybe use as a touchstone for this. Maybe your barbarian is a, a wild warrior from a savage tribe somewhere or something. And if they're a hunter, then they have to be patient. 
They have to be clever. They have to know which game trails to follow, which dens to set traps around, when, mm -hmm. when is a good time to go out, and when should you stay in. Like All of those things imply a sort of understanding and knowledge of the world yeah. that a high intelligence can reflect. And obviously, if you say choose nature, for your, uh, you know, as one of your skills, or you get it as part of a background, you get it, you get a, a benefit there. Playing a smart barbarian, I mean, it doesn't have to be right, like, right, right. Well, I, you don't I, have to be like a savage warrior who's yeah. just sort of like an animal cunning. Kind right. Of thing. Well, I like, I like the idea actually of what, what if you have someone who is educated and in the ways of war, right. like officially, and so it's all about getting, getting your men or your your party into the right position tactically, mm -hmm. and then when the blades are drawn. Right. You give yourself over to battle. Like right, you, right. Like, no plan survives contact with the enemy, right? So you yep. plan as much as you can, but the second steel is crossed, you, you give like yourself to over. that passion yeah. and let it take over. Let and then now, over. you know, everybody knows their job. <laughs> right. That raises the question, like, what would you do if you chose a barbarian that was a scholar, like a scholar background? Their education, their, their mental uh, capacity is one thing, and then they have this inner rage that they tap into that nerd sort rage. of like it's a nerd rage that that sort of takes over you could do like the you know the tactical mind the strategic mind that's represented by a high intelligence but i think you can also do like a classically educated uh individual you maybe chose scholar or acolyte or a custom background that features knowledge skills because you want yeah, sage, them yeah. sage something like that and then now you're uh yeah that's right sage and and then do something different with it portray mm -hmm. a different kind of barbarian mm -hmm. i think that uh one of the barbarians on the wonder quest podcast is like that she's like a sage background or something and yeah her rage is more just like a, the frustration and anger at, at all the tragedy that she suffered <laughs> <laughs> right, it's the kind of barbarian that at the end of the battle, coated in blood, they're sitting on the on a pile of corpses, reading a book with their glasses on the end of their, their nose, their just splattered with blood, just like calming themselves down with a good book. <laughs> like, I actually kind of want to play that now. Right, right, right. <laughs> but you can, sounds kind of fun. But when you think about the other stats that way as well, like what what does a very wise barbarian look like? Maybe they're a barbarian who are who's very in, in touch with the natural world, mm -hmm. with the spirits that inhabit the natural world. Maybe they're kind of one of those barbarians that's like. Yeah, you civilized folk have forgotten something essential about how the world works. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're playing up that barbarian as the outsider, barbarian as the wilderness sort of okay. warrior, then that's a good way to portray that. Or it could just be maybe it's a barbarian who understands people very well. And that wisdom is reflected in things like insight and perception. They, they notice things. They understand them. They understand motivations very mm -hmm. well. You know, they come from a place where no one ever lies. And so it's easy for them to spot liars. They're like, oh, yeah, look at all these liars running around with their lying lies. Yeah, not being able to make eye contact. And, right, you know, right. Stuttering over, like, it was just a simple question. You can't give me a straight answer. How does he know? How you does know? he know? Or or they're, perhaps they have a, a, or a certain uh, serenity or something, right? right? And when they're not raging, they're this very peaceful, um, you know, well-adjusted sort of person. And then when battle comes upon them is when they let out something that's inside them. And then charisma is one of those where it's like, what? this is where you get like a barbarian warlord. Mm -hmm. They're there to split skulls and take gold and distribute it to their followers. And mm -hmm. charisma sort of, to me, represents that larger-than-life personality. Yeah, right? they walk in a room and everybody just gravitates to them. Right, right. Animal magnetism, mm -hmm. that kind of, that's how I would describe it there. And I think that the stats of a barbarian define it more than other characters because they're so primal and so physical. Yeah. And that also translates to, to the ones that you're picking for your, um, for your mental stats. It's worth thinking about and, like... Yeah, doing uh, something different than the dim-witted idiot Claude, who murders things with a seven-foot sword. Right. I mean, that is fun. You can. The thing is, you can have that also. You can, you can also have. You can that. murder things with a seven-foot sword, right. and then you know, reflect on it afterwards. Right. So speaking of of reflection, uh, Xanathars, of course, they have all their their little quirks for each class. Sure. Uh, yeah. Because they have uh, what personal totem. They got tattoos and they got superstitions. Yeah, so these, you know, part of our, our wanting to explore these classes from a role-playing perspective was because there's all these great tools for, like, fleshing out your character and giving yourself little things that you can do to role-play them and add depth to them in Xanthar's Guides. Personal Totem is one where it, do it doesn't have to be for the Totem Barbarian, right? Like, this yeah. is for any of the Barbarian types. But it could be uh, an object or something with a mystical origin or personal significance. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a token or a totem from the first battle 
yeah. that the barbarian had, or if their tribe or, or group that they came from has a protector or a uh, particular superstition or tradition or something mm -hmm. that they observe, maybe that totem is the physical representation of it, right? Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, you have a barbarian, a father who had to bury a child, yeah, and their totem is just a ribbon tied around their wrist mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. the child, and that's the last thing they have. That's the last that's thing. The they source had. of their rage, right? And that's the other. You bring up a good point there because, like, is their personal totem tied to their rage? Mm -hmm. Right, and the other powers and abilities that they get through their subclass and, and through barbarian class features. Like, is it something where they need to touch or focus on or reference in some way in order to tap into that inner rage and unlock mm -hmm. those abilities? Is it something that, that represents those? If it's a physical totem and you are a literal totem barbarian, is it like, okay, in order for me to have my bear rage, I have to hold my bear claw in, in the palm of my hand and, and whisper a prayer to the bear spirit before mm -hmm. I allow it to take me over yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, take the bear claw and cut yourself a little cut bit. Cut yourself so. a little bit with a draw blood and yeah. then the bear, it, the bear can, you know, can enter. That way you let it out. We're gonna get to talking here about like rage in yeah, a minute yeah. and all the wonderful things you can do with it. The other thing about a personal totem is, is it something from your character's past that yeah. defines them or, or signifies a particular event in their character's life, or is it something that signifies something for the future, right? So it, it, striving for something. Striving for something, right? So thinking back to Conan, at least the movie version of Conan, there's the snakes sort of, you know, coming together. Mm -hmm. That's a that's the totem, right? That represents both his past and a destiny yep. that that he has to face in you know in finding Thulsa Doom and the cult that's growing there, that kind of stuff. So you can have a, a personal totem that. Uh, foreshadows some future conflict that you want your dungeon master to weave into the campaign. Maybe an adversary that's that you've sworn vengeance against, if you even know who they are, um, or or some like uh, object or something that represents where uh, your destiny will take you mm -hmm. should you choose to follow that destiny. And maybe part of your campaign arc or something that you want to do with that is uncovering the significance of this object that you can't seem to. Yeah. Uh, can't seem to stop thinking about or yeah. obsessing over. Yeah, like you're dreaming about a, a thing, a pyramid or a whatever, and you yeah. constantly draw it and you constantly carve it. it. And it. And yeah. you, everywhere you go, you, you just like leave this sign everywhere. Right, right, and you right. You don't really know why. <laughs> mentioned like Close Encounters of the Third Kind again, but like... Right, you're making mashed potato sculptures with your mashed potato <laughs> sculpture. <with> your <laughs> he, always, he always plays with his food. I don't get it. You know, he just doesn't eat it. But then the tattoo is, is similar to the personal totem, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And you could have one where your personal totem is represented by a particular tattoo mm -hmm. and this is the one where you know it is are the tattoos on a barbarian are they do they tell a life story yeah right is it that they've gotten a tattoo at every major event in their life and they can kind of look at that their at their body and see their you know their personal history written on it mm -hmm. or is it like an ancestral history and every one from their particular group or tribe or whatever uh, gets these tattoos that reminds them of the link that they have to their ancestors or mm -hmm. the spirit world or something, right? Uh, or, or even just like a personal family history right, tattooed right, right. Down, down each arm and, and, and whatever. I recently got done playing uh, Ajax as a berserk barbarian, uh, soldier background, and I was like thinking through these things, like what would be Ajax's personal totem? What would be his, his, his tattoo or his superstition? And for me, the tattoos would be like, he, gets a, he would get a tattoo after every major battle, commemorating it with maybe a date or a location of where it was or some some event that happened in it maybe maybe get like a, you know in this time he captured the enemy standard so you get a tattoo of a, of a standard flag or something like yeah. that or maybe this time you know he was there holding the line against a, a brutal cavalry charge mm -hmm. and would get a tattoo signif signifying that and then those then become touchstones during role-playing moments whether it's downtime or a long rest or in battle or, or recovering from a battle or something Something where you can reference those things. You can reference a tattoo, you can reference a personal totem, mm -hmm. you can build layers upon layers of your character so that over time they're rich and full and, and have a depth to them yeah. um, that you've slowly built up. Like a totem barbarian. Yes. And you get the tattoos of the animals. Of the that, animals that, that are your totem. Right, that are you your totem. You get the bear on your chest for like for touch that. it or something. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, you focus on it mm -hmm. and it might light up, who knows? It's D&D, it's yeah. &D, who cares? How you define your, your barbarian rage and how you interact with it and how you perceive it, is it internal, is it external, where does it come from, how right, does it right. manifest? 
all of those things can be magical in and of yeah. themselves. It's the rage that makes a barbarian superhuman. Returning a bit to their superstitions and, and what, uh, what those represent, it could be that they're not superstitions in the sense that they are meaningless gestures designed to you know, affect an outcome, but they're really meaningless. But they are, in fact, the old ways. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is this isn't not stepping on cracks because you love your mother right. and the health of her back. Right. It's it's <laughs> it's more of knowing that when you go before these certain trees to give an offering when you right. pass these certain trees. Yeah. Because you know because you remember the old ways. And, yeah. And so like that brings me to something that has always stuck with me about the barbarian, and we mentioned it when we covered like the mechanics of the barbarian class, where it's like the barbarian is one of those classes that mashes up a mechanical archetype with a cultural archetype and and so it comes with this strong sort of primitive primal savage warrior that suggests you know uh, coming from a place where there's a lack of civilization or that they perhaps are more in touch with the natural world you don't have to go that route with a barbarian mm -hmm. you, you absolutely don't have to but that's the baseline assumption for a barbarian and so thinking in terms of like is this, is this my character's superstition, or is it, in fact, a remembering of the way that things used to be? D&D is replete with animist spirits, and this river has a spirit associated with it, and there's yeah. elementals and fey and undead and all these kinds of things that make up a large, invisible world uh, in Dungeons and Dragons that perhaps the people the barbarian comes from are connected to that world. Mm -hmm. They know that if you make that offering, this monster won't mess with you. That if you, if you say this prayer, if you make this gesture, if you do this thing, if you observe this ritual, they have meaning because this is D&D &D and there's magic all around us. Yeah. Um, but that requires a dungeon master either letting the player define all that for them or coming up with it on their own. But, you know, it's absolutely worth it. it. And really, as a DM, let them do that because they're doing your work for you. They're giving your world lore. Right. That you don't have to come up with. That you don't have to come up with. And, and, and it's one of those things where my favorite thing about character creation in Dungeons and Dragons in any role playing game is getting to discover things about my world that I didn't know. And that yeah. happens when the players take a certain ownership of their character background and, and their character's place within the world. Mm -hmm. And something like a superstition or a list of taboos or something that your barbarian observes can just, it's a little brick in the wall. It's just a little bit more in this edifice you're building of this grand campaign world. And you can let the players take some of that uh, off your hands. Yeah, so uh, taking all like, uh you know, we were dancing around it. Let's get right to Let's it. Let's get right down to it. Uh, with, with the totems, tattoos, superstitions, or just not even those, what like what is the rage for a barbarian? Where does it come from? I mean, like, <laughs> you're right. Like, where does it come from? The barbarian rage is why you're here for barbarian. Right. 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 Like everything that you mechanically speaking, at least, yeah. and 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 even thematically, their whole story of the barbarian is a warrior that taps into something or that has a resource in a primal savagery, mm -hmm. a rage. Um, and so it's it's worthwhile to to take some time when you make a barbarian to think, okay, what form does my rage take? Is it the classic, I just get so angry that I hulk out, yeah. right? And you just Go use red. that anger yeah. to fuel the violence that that you have to uh, that you have to get down to, or is it something different? Is it external to the character, or is it something that's a part of them? Mm -hmm. um, how does your rage manifest? Is it a sort of blind, blood red, frothing at the mouth, biting your shield sort of? Mm -hmm. frenzy or is it more of a um, you know the spirit of something overtakes you and you allow yourself to be used as a vessel for a powerful force that you might not understand but that grants you this fighting prowess yeah well like yeah. Uh, ancestral guardian ancestral guardian is a great example of that as well right? as totem warrior right yeah. like you're talking about a spirit that overtakes you maybe your ancestral guardian is a uh, it, it's not just a, a you know a being or something that you occasionally tap into and seek advice from, but is like okay, I, I when I rage, my ancestral guardian takes over. Mm -hmm. I, my my barbarian, you know, lets their ego slip from their grasp, and their body is possessed by this ancestral spirit, and that is where the fighting prowess comes from. The abilities that they get on a rage is because they let a spirit 
take them over for a yeah. while. Um, and maybe they black out during yeah. the experience. Yeah. And they're just, yeah, they I mean, come to later and they're like, yeah, oh they're shit. Like, what, the hell, <laughs> what the hell just happened? You know, I mean, right. it could be where they just kind of move over in the passenger seat and just yes. go along for the ride. But, yeah. you know, whether or not they remember or not, uh, in my game, uh, E404, the robot, uh-huh. uh, that's what she does right now. Yeah. Or that's what they do. They don't remember. Uh huh. They're just like, what happened? And it's just, right. and everybody's kind of like, uh, oh my God, what did you just shit, do? You just murdered like four people and you don't remember anything. <laughs> Thing, that's unsettling. Things were spontaneously catching on fire yeah. around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that kind of. Thing. But uh, <laughs> another another example of the of being taken over, like I love, is uh, from Dresden Files. Uh-huh. When you have the uh, the spirits that can like inhabit uh, people and and yes, um, it's the guy from the I can't remember his name, but he's from the Revolutionary War era. He's got the gun and the hatchet. Yes, I know. Protect, I know you're prote- talking about. They're protecting uh. the, the 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 ectomancer right. and all that. And he <laughs> takes over the the little tiny ectomancer and kicks the shit out of this guy. It's like that shouldn't happen. Right, right, uh, right. The, the the spirit of dead warriors and maybe yeah. like your ancestral guardian barbarian isn't like these aren't the ancestors of my people or anything mm-hmm. like that. Maybe they are part of like a warrior society that. Um, Attracts the ghosts of dead warriors. Yeah, the League and, of Warrior Gentlemen. Yeah, and those and those warriors inhabit a, a, a monastery or, or something, and and it's these barbarians who are there learning from their dead masters or or ghosts and spirits that come here to to train with them, yeah. and then they all they do is perfect their bodies so that when the spirit takes over, they have a vessel worthy of being inhabited. Yeah, no, that's that's, oh, that's, a, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. And and would they like? I love. I would love the idea of them just talking to those spirits, like 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 you know, like Luke talking to Obi Wan. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Imagine force, like a force ghost. But kind of no thing. one else can see them. No one else. And can so see you them. have this warrior that people are kind of like. You know, he just talks to himself sometimes. Yeah. And he's over there just chatting it up with the the ghosts of warriors past. Yeah. Maybe it's tied to a weapon or a personal totem or something yeah. like that that they have. All of those things can also apply to totem warriors, right? Because you're talking about the spirit of an animal taking over you. Maybe the totem warrior lives amongst the animals mm-hmm. that they seek to emulate, and yeah. so you have. Just just like this guy literally lives with bears, and or, or did for a while, or he did for a while, or until they did, ripped his face off. Yeah, this guy built a platform high on a cliff face so yeah. that so that it so that he could sit with the eagles. Yeah, and made made the climb up to that platform and just sat there and worked on his eyesight. Worked on the eyesight, that kind of thing, you know, or or someone who you know runs with horses or or hunts with wolves or mm-hmm. you know that's something that's one way you can do it or it could be this more studied uh, mystical approach where the barbarian you know meditates and contemplates and 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 through training and meditation they are able to tap into something inside them and and maybe there's a world spirit or the you know they, that's where like the animal lords come in and so it's mm-hmm. like they they contact the wolf lord and yeah. the wolf lord grants them a boon and allows them this this totem power yeah. uh, that they have or, yeah, or I mean, you know, when you go to like Path of the Storm Herald, they revel in storms. They're yeah. the ones out on the decks of ships during the yeah. typhoon where everybody's below decks throwing up. They're on the prow of the ship just, yeah. <laughs> just they, laughing they, into the lightning. They watch the thunderstorm as it crawls across the prairie mm-hmm. and, and you know, makes its way, lightning striking down, winds picking up until it's just like that wave of primal energy that precedes the storm washes over them. And they're now at peace with themselves, mm-hmm. you know. Um, or you could reflavor it in the way that that you know E four hundred four in your Star Wars Bound game has, where it's like, yeah, they they uh, they have a, a something wrong with them, <laughs> and yeah. when they rage, it that's when it comes out. There's a malfunction or there's a problem. Maybe your storm, your inner storm, is one of those things that you have no control over, and yeah. you need to, you know, all right, everybody, stand back. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't want to get burned. <laughs> don't want to get burned yeah. or, no, it's, it, or, you know, scorched or shocked or... <laughs> yeah, it's per- it's perfect for her. I, lo- I like, I absolutely love that. It's just some bad code. Causes her to overclock her processor and uh-huh. she he- overheats. Right. So, you know, it starts burning things as she is too hot to be around. Thinking about all the, where your rage comes from, what, what, mm-hmm. what form does it take is worthwhile because it gives you... A a chance to specify something about your character that people are going to make assumptions about if you don't. 
Yeah. Right? Because people are going to assume, oh, it's rage, it's anger-based, your character's just sort of strong and angry and big and hits things. And there are some where that's appropriate. Berserker is one of those where, yeah, your character is, like, angry. That anger clouds their mind and makes them immune to certain magic. It gives them a speed and ferocity that mm -hmm. others can't necessarily match, but it is taxing. However, when I played my Berserker Barbarian, I was like, he's not angry. He's not, he doesn't lose control. He doesn't, mm -hmm. whatever. He's gains control focused he gains control yeah. and for the most part i mean the the gameplay didn't sort of work out like this but as i conceived the character ajax was a very jovial laid back kind of person he's just like i don't want to be a farmer i don't i don't want to toil in the fields i'm just big and strong and and like fighting and then once it's in a fight he's focused yeah and the the fight is all he sees and he sees every move that people could possibly make and every opening and potential opening and that's where things like his resistance comes in because he's just not there yeah. where the enemy thinks he's going to be and at the same time he's spotting an opening that's the reckless attack that's you know that's the, sort of the, the risk reward of that and thinking it less of like a rage that takes over and more just like all right it's time to fight i'm in the zone don't bother me. But yeah. it's very, ta it's mentally taxing, so then he's, you know, sort of exhausted after it's over. It works the same way with, like, Battle Rager, you know, where your, yeah. your character's just like, I'm gonna rage during battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although, you know, and we've talked about this before, you should really, like, why can't anybody just slap some armor, <laughs> some spikes on some armor? Yeah. Did, are dwarves really such, like, battle savants? <laughs> They're like, wait a minute, I got the, I got the perfect I got this idea. idea. <laughs> take our armor and put spikes on it and shimmy around. Shimmy around. We can destroy anything. Just accepting the premise of a battle rager requires a greater suspension of disbelief than <laughs> yes. regular barbarians because yeah. you're just kind of like, wait a second. They're real, if, if it was good to put a lot of spikes on your armor, then someone would have done it already. And yeah. it seems like that that's not the best thing to do. Weapons are going to get caught up on them. Mm -hmm. You know, you want weapons to slide off your armor without any obstruction. You don't want them hanging out yeah. here, you know. And, and are you really going to try to just mosh pit your way through a fight. <laughs> I'm just imagining just a dwarven mosh pit and just, it's just blood flying everywhere. Right, but yeah. this is D&D &D and, and you suspend your, your, your disbelief a bit and, and you accept that a, 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 you know, a, a dwarf covered in iron spikes with big punch daggers is, is punching around. I don't see any problem with letting other other races like a Goliath battle rager or a Minotaur battle rager or a half orc battle rager like those seem like good fits right a Minotaur battle rager right so. it really the Minotaur battle rager is like the horns <laughs> and like say two spiked gauntlets and uh -huh. just yeah they're big and 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 they're they're meant to bowl you over and in fact I think I made a Minotaur battle rager at one point just messing well, around now I want to right uh, <laughs> another one I want to do is the mounted barbarian so you can tap into your road rage uh -huh. I think that would be a good one <laughs> that would be be a good one. <laughs> I'm sitting on Mopac. I'm just like, I was on a horse. I just kick that. Yeah, I think the yeah the Adventures in Middle Earth. I think their version of Barbarian has a like a Rough Rider might be what it's called, but Road Rage is <laughs> good. <laughs> Dude, okay, now, now, now I want to make DMX as a Barbarian <laughs> on a horse, rolling around with his posse. What? You think this is a game? <laughs> <laughs> he just barking at everyone as he's raging. Arr, 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 arr. <laughs> and then, like, finally, we've got the Zealot, right? Yeah, the Zealot. And the Zealot is my, my, my favorite barbarian I haven't had a chance to try yet. Not just because they come back from the dead really easily, but because I like that idea of a, of a divinely fueled yeah. fury. Yes. And, you know, maybe this is a, uh, maybe the zealot is sort of like someone who's been wronged. And they're, they share the sort of same conceptual space as maybe a vengeance paladin or something. Mm -hmm. Someone who's been wronged and allowing the furies, the, the divine, you know, those divine beings that punish an injustice to inhabit them. Yeah. And, they, and they're like, well, I wasn't a warrior until I experienced my injustice and now my rage knows no bounds and the gods back my fury and, yeah. and my quest for, for satisfaction uh, is divinely sanctioned. Yeah. Uh, are, oh yeah, they're, <laughs> they, they, are the, they are the conduits for the gods who are normally like seen like, say like a, a zealot barbarian of like Lathander or something right. like that, that is seen as like this good and pure and it's all about creation and new life. But everything has to have some darker side. So the gods instill those darker, uh, the, yeah. the, vengeance the vengeance in these, in these people that are vessels. Cause right. it's like, I can't have this. I'm going to give this to you. Right. 
do my will. Do you know? my will. Yes. You know? Yeah. Be my be my vessel. Maybe it's something similar like ancestral guardian or totem warrior, yeah. where the the barbarian has to connect with a spirit that then rides them, to mm -hmm. possesses them, some kind. Yeah. Which brings up a, a brings me to now that we've kind of touched on every one of the subclasses. It brings me to my next thing about rage, which is like, when was the first time your barbarian raged? Yeah. Was it something that was controlled? Yeah. And when you pop your fury? Uh, was it something controlled and expected, or was it surprised? and uncontrollable. Right. Is it still uncontrollable? I'm gonna get weird here for a second, but this is where my thoughts go when I think of D&D. Of, of it's like, you know, the player makes decisions for the character. Right. And the player might decide, right now I want to rage. It's the perfect time. It's the perfect There's time, it's the big bad, it's a bunch of enemies, I know yeah. I'm gonna get all my 10 rounds in here, it's gonna be a big fight, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the character goes, oh, I'm gonna switch on my rage power and, and, and fight. Mm -hmm. And so like, the way that a game game mechanic manifests itself in the story of the game world is very important to me. And it's usually why I ask players, I'll ask them, what does your magic look like? What does the special ability you have look like? It's an opportunity for the player to say, this is what the manifestation of this game mechanic in the world looks like. Now, of course, my thoughts immediately go to, well, what if the character doesn't want to rage, but the player does? And now I'm all of a sudden giving the character an independent agency as if it were a living thing. Yeah, who, who controls the rage? The, right. Does the rage control the character or the character control? Sure, sure. And, and those you know. are fun shower thoughts and things like yeah. that when you're, you know, where you're just letting your DM's mind wander. But yeah. you know, your character is an inanimate, inanimate, unliving thing, and the player is a human being. You're in control of it, yeah. right? <laughs> so, uh, but it is. It does raise that question. The player makes a decision. Does that mean the character is in control? Mm -hmm. And perhaps the rage is uncontrolled, which means there's a trigger or or yep. conditions under which it will happen. When was the first time that happened? If we're talking about a zealot or ancestral guardian, maybe it takes weeks and weeks of training and preparation, years perhaps, to get your body ready to, to channel that energy yeah. that's going to be poured into you and to survive the rage that's there. If it's a berserker uh, thing, perhaps it's a great tragedy in your life that's fueling this rage, or it's a substance that you take, right? Maybe you take some sort of psychedelic or psychotropic thing and you're all of a sudden like just whacked out of your gourd and it's like, okay, guys, he drank his special herbal tea stay out of the way for a while. Yeah. <laughs> you know? See, now I want to make a totem barbarian that it's not animals, it's different substances. It's different take. substances. That's like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind yeah. of thing. All of those decisions differentiate one barbarian from another. And mm -hmm. you could play several barbarians in a row or concurrently or in the same group and the way that you approach how you distribute their stats, yeah. all of those things are gonna create different sorts of characters. And if you dig deeper than just my guy's angry and fights, or she's you know, she's like lives over with wolves and channels the wolf spirits yeah. kind of thing. Think about them a bit uh, more deeply, and this doesn't even touch on how do they learn to fight in the first place? Because right. they got all those martial proficiencies, they got all they they can use all these weapons. They've got training in different kinds of armor, so that implies that at some point they learned how to fight regularly, yeah. and then they also have this additional resource of the pr of the primal rage that gives them a, a, an edge in a fight. Yeah, uh, going to your, your point about um, what triggers it. I, I love that, again, to go back to E404 in my game, that A, you saw the first time that they raged. Yeah. And B, like uh, Kiana the player, had decided, like, it's when she sees her friends being hurt. Yeah. And it actually, like, executed that on, on a recent adventure. Where uh -huh. the first four or five rounds of combat didn't rage. And yeah. then as soon as one of them attacked Hilda... Yeah, There's eyes like, go red and smoke red. starts coming out the ears yeah. as their uh, social interaction protocols <laughs> glitch out <laughs> because pain was delivered to an associate. Right, know? right, right. It's similar with the barbarian in in Land Between Two Rivers. Ellie, I got the impression uh, from from her, from her player Anna that yeah, she's not quite in control of this rage, yeah. and it might be connected to some sort of past trauma, PTSD yeah. kind of situation, but it's definitely triggered by violence and action and something happening and it could be like an instinct that takes over mm -hmm. when there is violence in combat to, as a survival mechanism right. right like that's another way to portray a rage was just like this isn't so much a fighting spirit that takes over but just your character needs to survive and their mm -hmm. rage 
kicks in and gives them that ability to get through this thing before mm -hmm. they come out of it and like, holy crap, I do not want to do that again. R right, yeah, it's not a pleasant experience to put your body through that. Um, right. Also, I mean, we could touch on most anything with, with, with Ellie's character. I mean, oh, you, talk about, you want to talk about, <laughs> I can't believe we didn't talk about that with the whole dump stat. And the whole the, dump stat, like, yeah. She, she an went eight with an, con. an eight con. Uh, well, and a lot of that is is she wanted a high charisma for, yeah. for her character because the impression I got was like her character is this sort of soldier warlord sort of an in training uh, type character but also she's a genetic clone and so maybe perhaps the eight constitution represents a, a flaw in the process that can mm -hmm. be ironed out later I think there's a lot to be done with that and and it's one of those things where to return briefly a bit to the dump stat that dump stat doesn't have to be ignored it doesn't have to be a thing which is like oh yeah I'm gonna get a minus one or two to these rolls and it's gonna be really bad it can be something that your character and like this applies to any character at this point not just barbarians that they want to overcome and maybe they seek something out just like oh they know that they're not as smart as they'd like to be or they're not as perceptive as they'd like to be or that they're just kind of a, a a clod, a coot, yeah. <laughs> you they, know. But they did read a book about this helmet that you can find. <laughs> sure, and 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 maybe there's a quest or or a goal to you know shore up that uh, shore up that weakness, and and that's one of the things that drives them. Um, but returning to barbarians, um, you know, they are surprisingly one of my favorite classes in fifth edition, mm -hmm. and I wasn't expecting that when I when I when the game first started. I was like, ah, oh, there's barbarian. Um, yeah, get to them later. But I find myself coming back to them conceptually again and again, even when something like a fighter would be better mechanically, or a ranger would fit more in terms of like what I really want to do with them. I find that the barbarian offers this real interesting combination of mechanics and story potential that I'm like, man, there's really like three or four barbarians I really, really want to play, mm -hmm. and including like more of a character like Ajax who's yeah. a intelligent, thoughtful, uh, civilized warrior who mm -hmm. just happens to have this kind of fighting focus that, yeah. uh, that gives him advantages. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or just go watch Berserk and make Or just go watch Berserk and make guts. And make guts, because that's, that's, <laughs> that's an interesting take on the, on the fuming, quiet... Right. You know, he just wants to prove himself in battle, and that's literally it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's, a, there's a deeper meaning to that... Uh, that just goes beyond just fighting. And they get into that fighting. in the later movies we need to watch them. Gotcha. Someone, the, the video game is Darkest Dungeon. Anybody familiar with I'm that? I'm about to play Darkest Dungeon. It's coming out on Switch. It's, first off, it's fucking badass, and it's also probably one of the most frustrating games you'll ever play. You will lose. There's no winning the game. Right. That you, your characters will eventually go insane. They will break down. You'll have one where it's like, all 20 of my adventurers are in either the infirmary or the asylum. Is there a final boss? Or, no, or is there just... I mean, there's a final boss. There's a, it, the game can be beaten, but I've, most of the reviews of it are just like, you're, you, you will stop at some point because the game is just very... Difficult. You never have enough resources. You never have everything you need. I I got to the point where like the second tier bosses, I spent like a week trying to fight them and I gave up. I was just like, this is not fun. In all of my people, and because it's one of those words like if a, if you're, there's no save game, so it's just right. you can't go back. You Whatever. Can name your guys too. Can you, make you can name your guys. You can customize them. You get a whole big roster of them. There'll be like twenty or so, but you can't. They're, they die, they're dead. They suffer permanent injury. They're, they're injured. They're, they go insane in the dungeon and kill another party member. Then that's what happens. Or cause another party member to be killed. Then sucks. Shouldn't have played the game. <laughs>